In this video, I'll explain the timestamp code in video editors or the timeline code. And I'll be using DaVinci Resolve, but this will be pretty much consistent uh, throughout all video editors. And the reason I'm making the video, I've, over the last several months, I've seen people leave comments that they don't like the way the format is and they want to change it. So I'm going to explain why it's formatted this way, but I'm also going to also show you how to change it, at least in DaVinci Resolve. We've got DaVinci Resolve open, and let me explain this timeline code. So this is it, and you see that it starts with a 1. And the reason it starts with a 1 is because that's the hour. So what it's saying right now, it's in the first hour of the video, even though there's nothing on the timeline. The second set of digits is the minutes. Next set of digits is the uh, seconds. And the next set is the frames in each second. So I'm recording this at 30 frames per second. So it's easy to explain and, and, and understand more than if I had recorded at uh, 60 frames a second. So let me show you how to change it. Come up here to where it says DaVinci Resolve in the upper left hand corner. And then select Preferences. And you want to come over here where it says User. Select that. Come down to editing. And now I, I've already changed this. So normally it would have had a one here. That's the default setting. So I went in and changed it to zero, zero. And if you save it now, if you come down here to the, to the uh, save button, It'll, it will save it, but it will only save it for this project. So if you want this changed for all your projects, come up here to the little three-dot menu icon and then say, select Save User Preferences as a preset. This window will open. You can, call, you can name it whatever you want, then select OK. As you can see up here, I already have one. I just called it Paul Custom Preset. But mine is um, set to zero, 01, but I've got it set at zero, 00 for this project. Then when you're done, just click Save. But as you can see, it still has the one. So what you want to do is come over here, grab a video clip, and then drop it in the timeline. And now you can see that it's set to zero, 00. So I'm going to go ahead and load another project and I'm going to, uh, uh, it has a couple of video clips in it and I'll explain why I don't think this is a good idea to change it to zero, zero. Okay. So I've loaded the project that I want to use to explain everything. So to make sure that we're looking at the same thing, come up here to the top of the, uh, uh screen and select workspace and then come down and select Reset UI Layout. Now we should be looking at the exact same thing minus the video clips. So over here on the left, this is, uh, if you run your mouse over any of these uh, uh, clips, images, if there's an audio track or an audio file in here or a graphic, just run your mouse over it and you'll see it over here on the left in the media preview window. This I very rarely use. It basically just takes up space. So to free up some more space, come up here to the upper right-hand corner of the screen and select Inspector, and it'll hide that. Now, all we see is the preview window for the uh, timeline. So the video clips and images and everything else that's on the timeline. So what you need to do is select an in and an out point. So I'm just going to click rewind and press the letter I on the keyboard. 
Then you want to go to the end of the um, the uh, of the uh, track, wherever your last image or video is, and so set an out point. But right now it's way way off to the uh, to the to the right of the screen. And if you notice down here, this is a scroll bar. So I'd have to scroll, keep scrolling all the way over. To avoid having to do that, come over here and select this little icon. And if you hover your mouse over, it says full extend zoom. Click on that. And now you're going to see everything from the beginning to the end, except we need to extend this, uh, this uh, a little gray bar here for the in and out points. So I'm just going to, you can either drag your, uh, the playhead or you can just keep clicking it till it goes to the end and now press the letter O. So it's kind of hard to see but there's a clip at the beginning and a clip at the end. So if I want to zoom in on this I can either select this icon right here or I can just use this slider. So if I just grab the slider and pull on it you can see how it's it's we're at the end of the end of the the video track. There's no audio with this. I, I I picked a couple clips that didn't have any audio, but it, it works the same way. So this is the end of it. And then if I want to, again, if I want to see everything on the timeline from beginning to end, just click on this icon. So there, there, there's a video clip at the beginning, video clip at the end, and then this is just filler. This is just so there's not a blank spot in between the two. So I'm going to rewind it all the way to the beginning. Now, if you want to move ahead or back one frame at a time, if you have a keyboard that has the left and right and up and down arrow keys, they're usually right to the right side of the keyboard by the uh, keypad. You can do that. So if I just press the right arrow key, it moves one frame ahead at a time and left arrow key one frame back. If you're using a laptop and you don't have arrow keys, you can hold the letter K, the K key on your keyboard, hold that down. The L key, which is to the right of it, will move ahead one frame at a time. And the J, K, the J key that's to the left of the K will move it back. So the way, it, the way it's set up now, in a way I actually prefer it, and I didn't understand this when I first started video editing. I didn't understand why it would start with a one. So the reason for that, it's just telling you that you're in the first hour of the video. And as the video starts to play, and you can press the space bar to start and stop on your keyboard. It's counting the frames, the seconds, and if I keep going, it will start counting the minutes. So I recorded this at 30 frames a second intentionally because it makes it easier, easier to understand. So we've got the minutes, we've got the seconds, and now we're at the 20th frame at the four minute, 28 second mark. And as I press the right arrow key or the, the L key on the keyboard, it's moving ahead one frame at a time. So at 30 frames, the next one will be zero because it's gonna go to 29. So for 30 frames a second, it's gonna count from zero, zero, to 29 for 60 frames a second, it'll count 00, zero to 59. And that's the reason I used 30 frames is so it's not um, as confusing because that confused me when I was recording at 60 frames a second. I was like, what, why is there a second? I didn't understand. So that's why I, I, I prefer it this way with this um, one hour mark, because as I get down to the end of the video, And I'm starting to, I've started this clip at the, the, the last video clip at one, um, at the 59 minutes and 52 second point. So as this plays through, eventually it will get, now if you want to shrink your, if you want to shrink this down a little bit, hold the alt or option key and roll your mouse wheel backwards to shrink, to, to bring it down or forward to expand it. So backwards, alt key, roll your mouse wheel backward. It, it uh, will uh, cause it to contract and rolling the mouse wheel forward will cause it to expand. So 
here we go. Now we're at the 59 minute, 59 second, and I'm going to get to the 29th frame. Now we're at the two hour mark. So that the reason it's starting off with a one, it's just letting you know you're in the with with you're within the first hour, and now I'm into the second hour of the clip. So again, this is just personal preference. You can do whatever you want, but I I'm used to it. And and if you're going to do this, possibly in the future, as a, at a professional level, this is the way. This is the standard. So I would just leave it. I wouldn't change it to zero, zero because nobody else is. So anyways, I hope this explains this timestamp code or time code. And, um, if you have any questions, just leave it in the comment section and thanks for watching.